How should leaders respond to regulatory requirements? It is clear that demographic shifts have led to changes in how we meet the needs of patients. Hospitals across the nation seek to place greater importance on diversity, inclusion, and cultural agility. Various laws and national standards set out by regulatory and accrediting organizations have shaped the foundation of what we now consider diversity, inclusion, and cultural agility work. We will address first the health care considerations and later address equal opportunity statutes and guidelines. So let's look at a few health care related federal laws and accreditation standards that help guide organizational commitment to diversity, inclusion, and cultural agility. The first is Title VI. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This is the oldest of the laws that prohibits discrimination. Title VI prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, and national origin in programs or activities that receive financial assistance from the Department of Health and Human Services and, includes those with limited English proficiency. Secondly, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. This law prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability in programs or activities that receive financial assistance from the Department of Health and Human Services. It includes requirements to provide effective communication for hard of hearing and deaf individuals as long as it is not an undue financial burden. Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1973 this law prohibits discrimination against all qualified persons with disabilities in all programs, activities, and services provided by public institutions. These institutions include state and local governments and their departments. Title III of the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. This law prohibits discrimination based on disability by places of public accommodation and commercial facilities. Now, that we have covered a few of the legal protections, let's take a look at patient-centered standards and accreditation expectations. The Joint Commission has a set of standards that are a part of their accreditation process for hospitals. They focus on the policies and procedures hospitals have around language access services. Training for staff around policies and procedures. How to access the services. How language access is used and if it is used in critical times or points of care whether or how patients are informed of their rights, documentation of such services, and data collection to identify patients' cultural, religious, and language needs. Today, hospitals are evaluated on these standards, and compliance with them may have a profound impact on accreditation.